So you had this idea of a family as a man, a woman, two children, a dog, a picket fence. In the morning, you heard about how as homosexuality gets decriminalized in many places in the world, you have same-sex marriages. There's also a trans community. And actually, India has a very, very progressive law. The Supreme Court recognized the legal rights of the trans community well before, well before uh, so many other countries. And yet the battles persist, especially when it comes to family rights, to having a child, to having on fulfilling the dreams that so many others do. To talk about the modern family today, a rock star of Bangalore, she just gets absolutely, I mean, the kind of response I've seen to her is extraordinary. Please put your hands together, walking through that door for Akai Padmashali, one of the best known trans activists in Bangalore. And see, she's wearing a sari. I think we're all useless to not wear one. Shh, Barka, stop. The Nalli silk should make us the models for Nalli. Where are you, Lavanya? <laughs> Lavanya, wherever you are, that was a proposal for you. Come, Akai. All right. And I want to welcome Akai's partner on stage, Vasu. Can we please have Vasu on stage? Vasu is Akai's partner, husband. Please welcome him on stage. And in conversation with them today, someone who has challenged gender stereotypes in his own way, he is a well-known Bharatnatyam dancer and in fact has an all-male troupe of Bharatnatyam dancers. We'll get them uh, in our next edition for sure. Mithun Shyam, can we please have you on stage? Good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's such a beautiful gathering and it's a privilege and it's a joy. And I'm so thrilled that I'm getting to talk to Akai here because of the person that she is and the work that she's doing. So we all know the kind of work she's doing, the activism and what she stands up for. But I'd like to start off by asking, Akai, how are you as a person now? as a wife when you get back home, and also as a mother more recently. So I you know you've adopted a child, so how are you as a mother when you get back home, how is it at home? After all that wars and battles that you're fighting out there, how is it when you get back home? How are you as a person? I think the activism continues, you know? Your agitation, your acceptance, your fight for long, social justice, social inclusivity, many aspects of it. I think my fight till continues till I die. Why I say this, I think a new child who has come to the family and brought so much of happiness within the family institution, you know? As a person, challenging the stereotype of mother is a patriarchy word. Father is a patriarchy word. Woman, man is a patriarchy word. How do you, how do you challenge those patriarchal words and I want to be just a human being. I want to be a human, very, very good human being to my child. You know, when people ask me with so much of curiosity, what baby is it, what baby is it? Forget about the baby's sex. Talk about baby should be brought in baby's context, as a child context. You cannot be judgmental as an activist deciding my own child's sex to intersex male or female or whatever. You know, I think with that I also have so much of uh, the so-called family slash social responsibility. I'm coping up with that. If I'm aggressive, I shout at Vasu. Sorry, Vasu. <laughs> That's so wonderful to know. <laughs> yes. So, anyway, I'm really happy that uh, in the concept of the modern family, that's what uh, the theme was. That's why I thought I should ask you that. So when you said that, I understood uh, that, you know, we shouldn't be thinking about classifying a child, uh, you know, at such Sex. an early age. But then when it comes to sexuality and sex education, at what age did you realize, you know, about your sexuality approximately when you were growing up? When did you think you came to know that there is something different? I think the gender is more in terms of social construct. The sexuality is something that you're more oriented to, you know? Correct. My gender expression has been at the age of six, seven, eight years. 
when I expressed the feminine characters before my family, there was so much of negligence, there's so much of resistance not to behave the way you want it to be. Try to attempt suicide twice at the age of 12 and 13, I did not die. At the age of 16, I built my self-esteem, my self-respect, my self-dignity, and shared with my brother, I'm not a boy, I'm a, you know, like I want to be a girl. The first person who accepted me the way I am today, at the same time, my sexuality started at the age of 19 years. You know, at the age of 19, I started to attract to a man sexually. You know, that's how I indulged in the profession of begging and sex work. You know, because of there's so much of social stigma, there is so much of social exclusion. How do you fight against that atrocity? I think as the vulnerable, the most vulnerable section in the entire minority section or the community or the movement is the transgender community. I think go back to section 377. It was not for the elitist. It was not for the upper class English speaking section. Always section 377 was targeted to the vulnerable working class section who are in streets. We are direct effectors of it. I think how do you fight against this? I think today the adoption process has not come so easily. There are so many hijra community, the transgender section in the entire movement who are adopting children. There are people there are so many incidents like that. People do not want to come to the open closet. I'm not asking people to, you know, they should come open to the closet. But as an activist, I want to show that this society, sometimes my thought could be beyond law. Law cannot decide my identity. Law cannot decide my sexuality. Law cannot decide my family institution. I challenge that. I challenge that. Correct. So in that case, when it comes to a primary level of education, because like you said, a child might understand that he's feeling uh, like a woman inside, like a girl inside at a very young age. So how important do you think is uh, education at the primary level? So maybe at the age of, maybe at first standard or second standard, how important is it for our education system to start introducing sexuality from that age? Because if they're confused, they should at least know there's something like this. So how important is it, do you think? And what is sex here? Anyone in the room, what is sex? An unspoken word. It's an art. It's a curiosity. It's enjoyable. It's a procreation to protect your religion, culture, class, whatever. How do you teach this to my kids when they are in first standard, second standard? I think I remember the 2004 UPA government has unanimously rejected sex education for the country. The most opposition came from the family section. No, my kids cannot be taught sex education in school. I think what is sex? We're not asking kids to perform the sexual acts or sexual performances, which is good touch, which is a clap, yeah? How do you have your eye contact? Many the so-called men know, I'm not against man with penis. The person who should communicate, the communication should be between your eyes and not below that. The below will only belong to my husband. How, a clap, yeah, are you, you See, see these are the things that needs to be brought to this forum into the public realm. We are really in a situation, 21st century, we are still struggling like this for sex education. But, you know, see, so what is good touch? What is bad touch? If someone comes to you, how do you react to those uh, responses? My own family, my uncle who, you know, like who got harassed me, I did not have the guts to talk about this. But how do you do that? It's a big question. I think India has the largest democracy, largest population. I think we need to accept, and I am for sex education, and in context, education cannot be on the papers. Education is not about the papers. I think the interaction is about education. How many of us sitting in a room are understanding about sex work, violence, about the issues of class, caste, language discrimination, food discrimination? I think we are experiencing it. How many of you are teaching that? But all these Patya Pustakas, no, the texts, will not speak about this. I think my country should change for it. My country should change for this. Thank you so much. This is something I really wanted everybody to, you know, talk about and discuss. And one more thing. See, we are from the urban community. We are all in Bangalore. We are so privileged because we have access to the internet. We have access to all kinds of information, even in the newspapers. Or you just go on net and you get... Or we have such forums uh, such as this where in the cities, 
it's all discussed and we kind of at least have an idea. But then when it comes to the rural areas, I was just talking to your friend Priya also, she's from the rural side. How do you educate them? They have to come to know. If you look at our Puranas, it has always been there. Um, Arjuna becoming Shikhandi or, uh, I mean, Arjuna becoming Brihannale or about a Shikhandi who is a woman who has become a man. So it is all there and it was there in the ancient times. But our rural community has completely forgotten about it. Is, it. is that the case? Or how do we bring it to them? How do we communicate? How do we bridge that gap? My father says I belong to the Hindu religion. And Hindu religion has a dual stand. What a dual stand? People go and pray in the sculptures. Hampi, Hai Hole, Badami, wherever it is. Or Kujaraho, no? It is spelled as Kujara, Kajaraho, whatever. People go and do puja for same sexual act. When this practically we are doing this, why not when, why people are not accepting this? Are <laughs> Mera Bharat can't be so dual standard. I believe it or not, that becomes secondary. But let me say my Hindu dharma cannot be dual standard. You know, I agree with you the second part of it, going to the rural areas, the village, the very backward, you know, uh, sector of this entire region is concerned, which is challenging. My country cannot be one language, one nation, one tax pay. My country should also talk about how do you, uh, how do you, uh, there's one word to use, how do you, how do you execute right to education into practicality is my concern, right? See, we work with closely with the grassroots women who are farmers, Dalits, you know, the most backward section of society. We go and talk to them. Amma sex bag in me, yenamma go to andre. Ayayyo. Nan ganda idare, matar bedi. This is my husband, don't speak about this. So that's the status. About your own periods. Why you're so hesitant about your own periods, yeah? My ayappa is not against periods. My dharma is not against periods. It is part of your... Body, how do you educate my society in that context with concern? You know, I think, I think we need to be quite proactive in that sense. So that even the rural area, everybody, the overall pan across the country, across the world, people are introduced and they discuss it and it becomes normal. Yeah. You know, there, I'm looking for a day and time when it's so normal that it's absolutely fine. And that's the time I'm looking for. Um, I would like to ask you a question also. <laughs> so, I'll, um, Iga, Akai Avridare, Tumba Yavag Nordro, Activism Manta, Horgad Galatin and Adita Ruta, Namguida, a friend, so Activism Manta, in other the Bage, Activitas and Martha, now support Martivi, but to Wun Tumba Galate, our Jote Hodre and Yavaglu Galatine, New Galate, New Tumba Nodira, New other than Hague handle Martira. Our Wotadagana Nord Kondo, Gotu writes Pake Kelsamarta, Vargade Tumba, Jagla Irate, Galati Irate, our own the Harta Marcoti Valla, Pake Juna Madon to Dom, Adan Harta Marcondo. What a beautiful answer. I, what I asked him is so when it comes to a family, she, his wife is such an uh, activist, is always out there. How does he handle that, you know, that the noise around? his small family, right? When you have an activist as your partner. So, what a beautiful answer. You have to understand that when that understanding comes, you merge into that. That's, that's exactly, what a beautiful answer. I'm so touched by that. And from my perspective, um, I'd like to ask, I'm a classical dancer, I'm a Bharatanatyam um, dancer and recently I did a production called uh, Purushantar Gata. So what is truly inside every person? Is it purely man or purely woman or is there both aspects or is there something more than that within each person? And uh, of course there are quite a few movies also. So from somebody like me, Who's, a, who's on the stage and who's trying to express, who's trying to talk about different kinds of subjects. What would you expect from somebody like me um, or from the entertainment industry in general? About? About how, what we can do for, to, you know, to merge with community, you know, the, to introduce, to explain, to talk about, to have a conversation. So 
as an artist, so I know this, this is what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. What do you expect from somebody from the entertainment industry, if somebody from the artist industry, what do you expect? Do you think about what we can do for you? I think when a person, when an institution, when a region becomes legitimized in its thought process, you cannot overcome to change or to speak the politics of inclusivity. We need forums like We the Women Like This. People should be having the same space in our families, in our own platforms, in our own you know, situations and reasons. Yes. If that's so, I think, I think, I think the reason to the Supreme Court's two verdicts, which has boosted the movement, the 2014 transgender rights judgment, the 2018 sexuality, the human sexuality judgment, and people were quoting as gay sex judgment. It is not gay sex. It is about human sexuality judgment. I think those judgments, when it's been practiced in practicality, I think then we can see a just and non-discriminatory world. Correct. And <laughs> it's such a pleasure to be able to be part of that moment of making our country back to what it really was maybe centuries ago. Now, as an activist, as somebody who is out there fighting battles, there are so many horrible and terrible situations you must have faced. But then we would like to hear something that might have been funny also. <laughs> because it's what we read about when we read the paper, it's all about so, you know, it's all about the, you know, the fights and the battles and what she's standing up against and all that. How about something funny? I'm sure there must have been something like that which interests you. No, there are so many you. funny, you know, like moments, yeah. Once I know I'm wearing sari, I forgot to wear the blouse, just going outside. <laughs> Then my husband is cautioning me, hey, where's your blouse? Oh, I'm sorry, I get covered. So typical like that, so many things that happen. I think, I think so many funny moments. I think funny begins also sometimes quite serious, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, that's all about. Thank you, Barka, for coming. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm only standing there because I can't keep away. <laughs> Carry on, you have a couple of, one minute more, yeah. So. That's, that's so interesting. And I think, you know, this was interacting with you and, you know, this, this beautiful forum, We The Women, we have understood you so much better. You know, apart from that activist face that we always read about or on the net or in the papers, we have come to know you on a personal level, how you are as a person. You know, I should really, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful because it helps me in my work. It helps me in my life to have that interaction. And um, one of the best moments was seeing both of you together backstage. That love that they shared. I'm grateful to Barkha for giving me this opportunity to see that love that they shared. The modern family, yes, this, this is what I see our country. You know, accepting and being together. Thank you so much for Akai, any last words you'd like to say to everyone? How do I want to take uh, just 30 seconds? Yes, please. In Guta, like Namdu family is not a modern family, it's just family. Ah. Just a, and uh, the adoption process of my child is just three months old. Mm -hmm. And the uh, next Sunday is my child's ritual. People, my friends who are free, do come. Ah. It's a same house. And the ritual is not in one specific dharma. It's called an interreligious performance. And the child will be blessed by the Badhai system. And the Hijra Gharanas, Simon Gharanas sit together and perform this. First time happens in the southern part of India. Please come. Thank, Thank you. you. Big round of applause for the wonderful. Uh, they love you. Don't we? We all love her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. 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 And she has to model for saris, no? Yeah, she what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vasu. Thank you, Mithul. Please, thank you so much.